If you're dealing with low back pain, sciatica, or disc bulge, I'm gonna show you the top exercises that you absolutely need to avoid because you're probably making it worse. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Josh. Today's episode is gonna be about disc herniations and things that you can do to help your back pain because the truth is most people are actually doing things that cause an increase in pain when it comes to the lower back. You could be doing all the right rehab, you can have a good therapist, but at the end of the day, if you are constantly irritating it, whether you know it or unknowingly, you're probably going to not heal as fast as you'd like. So just by doing some of this stuff here or avoiding some of this stuff and having some education about this, what you're probably going to do is you're gonna notice an increase in function and a decrease in pain just by avoiding some of these exercises. So let's get into it. So by far, the biggest exercise that most people do that increase their low back is the hamstring stretch. And we have all seen it before where we kind of come in here and we stretch the hamstring either one leg, when we do this way, whether we do this way, it doesn't really matter at this point. Heck, you could even be doing this standing up, okay? At the end of the day, what we're doing, if we have an irritated nerve, it comes down through our hip, through the back here, and we pull on this direction. One of the biggest symptoms that most people say is that I constantly have like tightness in one hamstring or both hamstrings. And it's usually a nerve tension sign. Nerve tension just means there's irritation to the nerve and we're, when we pull on it, it increases the symptoms. So if we keep pulling on our nerve going downward, we're going to continue that irritation down there. Now, if you look at my spine here and if we kind of have a disc bulge going backwards, what we're probably doing here is we're rounding our spine and just that rounding, if we have a disc herniation, oftentimes that creates more irritation. So what you're really doing here, as you round the spine and we do this, we're not only pulling down on that nerve and causing irritation, but we're probably pushing that disc backwards. And it's probably best to just avoid that in general because you're probably irritating that way more than you need to. And that's probably causing you to stay aggravated. The next most common irritation that we see is the piriformis stretch or the pigeon post. You know, this one where people are in this position and they stretch out that nerve. This is very similar to what we just showed you. And if we look at this position here, what we're doing is we're still rounding our spine a little bit. So that can cause some irritation. However, we're not creating as much of a tension in the nerve here. So again, you see this leg here, it's bent. So we're not pulling the nerve down as much, but we are irritating it a lot through this general region. And most of the time, this just causes some irritation as well. So it's not as bad as the hamstring stretch, but I find that most of the time this provides minimal relief. So it's probably not even worth doing because it's causing you potential irritation. So if you just take the hamstring stretch away and the piriformis stretch away, most people feel a little bit better. One of the most common exercises that patients come in with when they say it hurts my back is when they're doing some sort of core or sit up position. So core is extremely important to actually strengthen the low back long term, but when you're really irritated and you're really injured, it may hurt to be doing things like this, like a sit up, like a crunch, because what we're doing here is we're hyper flexing the spine and it's a fairly violent motion. In addition, when we talk about in and outs, Russian twists, potential leg lifts, all that other stuff can cause a lot of irritation because what we're doing is we're actually adding compression to that disc. If you already have compression into the spine and you're adding more compression, it's probably not gonna feel good in the long term and it's probably not even gonna feel good in the short term. So it's probably best that you just avoid it and you go into some sort of plank, side plank, if you're looking to build your core. One of the most common exercises that we see an increase in pain is in a burpee. And everybody knows that burpees are tough, but they are also really, really good at increasing cardiovascular output. But the problem is that if you have that disc bulge going in, the first movement of a burpee is this, that hyperflexion. So even if we bend our knees, we still have some flexion. We come here, there's a rounding point here. We come out, even if you're completely stable here, which most people sometimes, the, as they fatigue, they'll do this hyperflexion or hyperextension followed by hyperflexion and then they bump, come up. Doesn't look like much, but if you have a really irritated spine, that hyperflexion followed by extension with explosion can cause a big relapse in your disc injury. So make sure that you avoid that as well. So one of my favorite exercises, and if you know me and you've been following along all this time, is a squat and a deadlift. The problem is with a squat and a deadlift is that most people 
one, don't have good technique, and two, if they're injured, when we go down to that bottom part of that squat, or we come here, we end up dumping or rounding, and that can cause a lot of pain or problems, especially if you're increasing in weight too fast or too soon. If you really wanna heal your lower back pain long-term, the actual goal should be to learn how to deadlift properly. I'm telling you right now that if you learn how to deadlift properly and you actually learn how to deadlift with good form, you will actually solve the low back pain riddle. The problem is that most people don't know how to do it and they don't know how to dissect that movement into different forms and eventually graduate to get there. If you do this too soon, you are gonna likely increase your pain, your problem, and most people just end up blaming the squat or the deadlift when they've had really poor posture for too long. It really comes down to your mechanics, how much you've loaded up or your load management, meaning how is your program look? And it really comes down to, do you have pre-existing injuries and can you get in there and have the right guidance to do it? Because again, lower back pain is not caused by this type of exercise. It's actually caused by a cumulative effect of poor posture, poor repetitions, and over time. So if you actually do this long-term properly over time, you're actually gonna make your back stronger. So at the beginning, while you're dealing with this, you may wanna just avoid this and slowly dissect this out and get into a different exercise program. Finally, guys, the biggest mistake that most people actually make when it comes to lower back pain is one, not having the right rehab program and going back into their sport way too fast or way too soon or they're increased their weight too much too quickly. This is a big, big problem. So if you don't take the time to take a step back and do the corrective care, do the rehab and do the things that you absolutely need to do to get back to the sport or the things that you love, you're just gonna keep re-aggravating or re-entering your problem. And it's gonna get really, really frustrating. So make sure you don't make that mistake. And also, if you found this helpful, make sure you subscribe we also have a free lower back pain guide that you can download designed specifically for disc bulges and disc herniations and low back pain. So make sure you download that. It's a free resource for you guys. I will link that here and make sure you subscribe again. I'll see you for the next episode.